Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We're gonna be taking this kitchen sink and faucet and replacing it. Uh, we're gonna go with a Krauss Lofton Pro workstation kit and a Moen SE faucet. Uh, we looked at lots of different options out there, but we wanted something that was stainless, that would clean easy. And uh, my wife really loves the feature of these uh, sinks that have the really long handle. Obviously, this one's going to be replaced. This one really does stink. Um, the whole handle here doesn't work, and it can actually spin 360 degrees, and it leaks constantly. I actually already have the hot water off just because we're having so many issues with it. Uh, so this is the final product. And this is what the final product looks like right here. Pretty awesome from where we came from at the beginning of today. Here are the tools and the supplies that I used. I used a Milwaukee hacksaw, plumber's putty, plumber's tape, always wear safety protection. I used a utility knife. There's a couple of different options you could use. I also used a flat bladed one to peel off a lot of the stuff. A couple of different wrenches, a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, a 5 8 open-ended uh, wrench. I had to use a smaller screwdriver as well on the backside, tightening down the screws that hold uh, the sink to the, the countertop. I used a hammer. I used a Sharpie to just help me get some better lines, and then I used some clear silicone. The rest of the stuff was supplied or was already with the, uh, the two purchases that I made, the sink and the faucet. The first step we need to do is make sure we turn off the power to the disposal. This does have a disposal on the side here. So we are gonna to go to the breaker box and go ahead and turn that power off. So in your breaker box, you'll look to find which one and disposal is right here. And so we'll go ahead and flip it off and then we'll go ahead and test it real quick in the kitchen. So we'll go ahead and turn on some water and test it to make sure that disposal is off, and it is. That is perfect right there. We're ready to go ahead and kind of unmount the sink um, and go ahead and take off the faucet and go ahead and start putting in the new one. So this is a bit of a mess in here just because there's so much going on, uh, but soon we'll be able to kind of clear it out and then kind of redo it all. Make sure your water is turned off. I already did it to the hot, but I am going to just double check it and then go up top and you should only have a little bit of a drip, but then it should stop just like that. But we're going to be working on taking off this right here and same thing on the other side. It should be a five eights on both of them. So go ahead and take that five eights and go ahead and start spinning it off. Wow, that was really loose already. And I always try to have a bucket and towels nearby. So I'm just gonna use something like this uh, to kind of help catch any of the water that comes out. Towels are also really good to have on hand because you will have a little bit of a leak, but not much hopefully, especially if you can get it in just like that. So that one is good. We'll go ahead and go towards the hot one now. So we got to get the hot off as well and uh, there's a whole lot less room on this side than the other one. I'm actually going to go ahead and unplug because we've already turned the power off but let's just get that out of the way. That's one less cord in our way. And so these supply lines sometimes get kind of tangled and twisted, but this one is starting to come. I'll go ahead and move the bucket under it. Okay, just like that, has a little bit of water in it. And then we'll go ahead and, uh, oh, there is really leaking now. Uh, then we're going to want to go ahead and look up inside and uh, I do not see any thing except probably caulk holding this in. So this was not done actually right. There should be some kind of screw that you screw and hold in 
but this one is just looks like it's all caulk which will make it a little bit easier but we still have a couple of things to get out but i did want to point that out as i'm looking under here so we have a couple of things to go ahead and start disassembling the first one is we're going to go ahead and take this hose off the top this is a flat head and so you just kind of spin it and this is from the um dishwasher and so it shouldn't really have a whole lot in it but might have just a little so i'm gonna go ahead and set that kind of off to the side and then you have two flathead screws one on this side that you can see and you can't see the other but it is on the exact same side so we'll go ahead and take that one off so once you kind of get it started, we'll go ahead and go to this other side. This one is kind of a blind one, so you just got to figure out where it's at and then start spinning it. And this does have a potential to leak as well. Pretty much everything under here does, but it should only leak just a little teeny tiny bit. Go ahead and save the screw. We'll have two of those. If you wanted to change out your garbage disposal, this would actually be a pretty good time uh, to go ahead and do that just because you're pretty much taking it off anyways. So I like to go ahead and take a little bit of a hammer and just tap it to the left and this thing should start. I also put a hand on the bottom. should almost be there and just like that that's down and off so that is perfect and then we have one on this i will need to get as well so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to actually just go ahead and undo it here so we can get to it uh, when we pull the sink out which should make it a little bit easier so go ahead and just kind of push that down it does get a little gross a little nasty in there uh, but that will give us the freedom to be able to just pull that whole piece off and uh, the whole thing will come out. So if you remember, I said it's not really hooked up under and actually you can see it kind of already lifting up. I'm gonna take a utility knife and just slowly cut along the edge of it. So I'm pretty much just scoring right where it is. on all the sides that you can reach. And then I just kind of do a test to see how much more. So you still got a little bit here. Okay, that pretty much popped all the way around. And so we're ready to go ahead and take it out. I would encourage you to find a second person to help you. Um, and so, now remember, there's still stuff connected underneath, so you don't want to break any of it. And sometimes this little uh, hose gets caught up on things, so do be careful with that as well. Don't just start yanking it. But uh, if you can see right here, this is where it was supposed to hook onto something, and there was nothing for it to hook onto. So we're going to go ahead and clean this off real quick. You can go ahead and grab your beautiful little container just to make sure all of it is good. And we don't know if we're going to have to cut it until it's kind of officially time to put it in. So that is one thing you will have to pay attention to and we will dry fit the new one. But this one definitely has been cut before. You can tell this is not the original. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a flat head. There are three of these little screws you'll need to go ahead and unscrew. And then that should just pop right off. and you can kind of push this in. You will get stuff all over the place. Make sure you save your ring if you are gonna use it again, or you can buy a new one. 
There's a ring here too. It's kind of that spring ring that goes in there right on the edge there. So you'll want to save all of that if you're going to reuse it. And then same concept over here. So we'll go ahead and take this and go ahead and spin this piece off. This is what we would potentially need on the new one. Uh, the rest of it is, you can just throw it away because this does come with new ones. So these, I'm not certain about the disposal though. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up. Remember this is that Lofton Pro workstation. So if you do need the cutout, which is pretty awesome, they do provide that with it uh, to show you exactly how big you need it. So I do like that. That is pretty nice of them to do. It's got lots of different parts in it. Here's one of those sink uh, stainless steel strainers. So we definitely can get rid of one of them. And so right there it is, all the information with it. And it has a cutting board, which is pretty awesome. That's come standard with this model. All your important information, make sure you read all of that. Here are those undermount screws. Um, and so that is really important. And they also have top mount screws, which are a little different, but uh, both of those are nice that it does come with those. Remember mine did not have those. Here is your other beautiful stainless steel strainer. So there's two total of those. And this is your little mat, which comes with it, which is pretty awesome. And uh, that fits right into the top of it. So we'll show you what that looks like all together, all complete. There's just more and more little things in this. They actually use the space well. And these are the drain caps. We'll go ahead and lift this out of here. You get lots of foam to not recycle. It also should come with two of these, which help hold uh, dishes from being in the bottom of it. It's just like a little uh, kind of strainer, but uh, just sits the dishes up a little higher, which is nice as well. Just lots of stuff. More foam, because you can't get enough of that. And then it is kind of heavy, so I'm going to Go ahead and lift it up kind of from the center and not on the ground. And uh, you can see it's got nice support all the way around. We'll go ahead and open this thing up and uh, show you more of it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up this Moen. I think it's pronounced SE. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it on this video. Um, they had a couple of different models of this one. This one did not have the motionless sensor, which didn't feel like we needed. So this is the way we went with it. But again, they have other things. And uh, motion sensors are nice like when you're in public places, but I don't think it's necessary for home. And so I'll just show you inside real quick because it does come with the little soap dispenser, which we are going to install. And so has lots of paperwork as well for you to go ahead and read and know exactly how to do this. It also has the one, two or three option. We're just gonna keep it with the one option because this one already has one hole cut perfectly in it. So that's the way we'll go with that. So before we get much further, I do wanna go ahead and check. You do wanna make sure if you're doing the top mount, you use the top mount cutout. And uh, this one does look like it works perfect, except for when we actually put the thing up on top and kind of dry fit it, we are gonna have to cut through this, which I know is a bit of the support for the cabinet, but I do think it will be okay. Um, but we will just have to trim that up. We're just gonna hit it with a jigsaw real quick. So because this does not fit, we're actually gonna be using a little bit of a hacksaw uh, and we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. I think I said jigsaw a minute ago, but the jigsaw will not work. Um, so we have to do a hacksaw, which is fine. This thing works pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and test it again, see if it fits. We may have to do the other corner as well. I'm not certain, but I know that one was definitely an issue. So it does look like we'll have to do the other one as well. And then we'll go ahead and hit this corner up as well. So 
So you are gonna to wanna to go ahead and dry fit it, making sure all of the corners are exactly where they need to be before you put anything else on. So we're gonna go ahead and start on the disposal side, which is the left side, but this is the top. Might be hard to see, so this is where your faucet will come out. So it'll be the left side. So just kind of backwards facing, but I think it does make the most sense doing it this way. We're gonna be using some plumber's putty. And so go ahead and take yourself a good chunk. Think of it like Play-Doh as a school age kid. And this is a little bit higher quality than the cheaper stuff you can get, uh, but we're just trying to get it nice and laid out just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and take it. And this is the disposal. This is that top of the disposal. This one did not come with a disposal. It, uh, the sink, it came with two of the strainers and we do want to continue to use a disposal. And so when you put this in, I like to actually have it face the correct direction. So it's gonna be hard to show you on here, but I am gonna go to the other side, face that the right direction and just lightly push it in. And then you can go ahead and grab, you're gonna to need to go ahead and grab this right here. And then you can go ahead and put that on. Uh, then I like to go ahead and unscrew these a little bit. So again, all you have is the little washer thing on here. This, face that direction. Go ahead and put this on, and then we'll go ahead and put the ring around it. Just like so. And then we will have to line these up. So this does take a couple of seconds to get these lined up. I then start screwing these in pretty evenly. And I'm just doing it by hand right now to where we get it kind of tight because they are pretty loose. But when we get it kind of tightened down, I will have to get that screwdriver, which is right next to me. But again, you want it to be pretty much the same amount of turns each time. And it should ooze out a little bit on the front side. And that is okay because this is pushing up against it and giving you a watertight seal. And so just leave it kind of oozing out. That's totally fine. I'll, we'll wipe it out at the end. Oh, I need to back it back off just a little bit because I did not get this thing seated properly. And then we'll just continue. And so you might want somebody on the inside holding it as you're spinning this. And the goal is to get it even all the way around. So the same amount of turns. You can actually count them if you would like to, um, but you do not have to. Okay, and that should be really tight on there. That's what we want because that's gonna slide onto that garbage disposal. So we'll go ahead and hit up this side as well. We are gonna use their system here, which is a little bit different than what we had on ours originally. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and spin this to the left because inside of here is a washer that we will need in a few seconds. And if you remember, we had this from before, we need this piece in just a minute. So we'll go ahead and spin this off. Like I said, this is much different than the other one. We'll go ahead and take the black piece off, leave the white one, and then leave this little piece. And so this does not have any name or anything, so it doesn't matter which direction it goes. But you will wanna make sure that white piece is pretty lined up and the drain is as well. We will go ahead and put this on. Put that nice and snug up against it. And then we'll go ahead and grab this and begin to spin this on. And kind of the weird thing is, once it starts spinning on, you actually will need to hold it with this. So on the other side, you can go ahead and put that in and it'll help give you something to hold on to. And it's all plastic, so we're only going hand tight. Like I'm not killing it. 
like that's it. Uh, then we will need to take this off because we have this piece that goes on. So pull that off. You should have kind of a clear looking O-ring in there as well. Push that down. Put this on here. Then that on there. Uh, then the O-ring on. Sorry, that was a little backwards at first. So this piece will hold on to here and then this piece will actually catch your drain. And I know this is gross. You definitely can replace all of this if you would like to. And then make sure you put your washer in here. And so I do like to seat that washer all the way down in there. Go ahead and spin that on. And that right there is all you gotta do. And that is set. We still have this to put on. So I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit just to make sure it can get it where I need it to go. Uh, then we will go ahead and put on all of these clips. There are a ton of them. So the next thing we're gonna do is the mounting hardware. And these things are a bit difficult to get in. Um, and so when, you, when they flip out, so these are gonna go in. You kinda of do have to pull them from the original and you do want it to kinda of hook up and so as you're doing this, they are a little difficult to get on, but they will go on. And then I'm gonna push them back a little bit because then we will flip them out and tighten them down to get them snug as we can. So there are a bunch of these. I'm not gonna record doing all of these. Just go around all the different sides that have it, push them in there, get them to lock in. This is what was missing on those other ones. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and work on getting the actual faucet in. And so it comes off in lots of different pieces. So the first thing you're gonna need is this gasket and you can go ahead and put everything through it. You are gonna face the gasket with that, the flat part and the other part facing up and just go ahead and feed it through everything. And it should fit into the base just like this. And then you can go ahead and feed this very carefully through. Just feeding each and every piece of it. Remembering that gasket should be on there as well. That helps hold everything in place and centered. And then you'll have a bag with some nuts, plastic nuts and a metal piece. You'll need to go ahead and open that. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this on. It kind of looks like a moon with a circle. And go ahead and slide that all of the way up until it kind of starts to get firm up there. And then you can go ahead and grab the nut. And it does come with this nice little screw piece. And so you can just go ahead and kind of start that by hand, making sure you're not stripping anything. And then you can go ahead and use the tool that they provide for you. You can also put a screwdriver in the end of this. And this does take a few seconds to go ahead and screw all the way up. This is nice if you ever have to do this again. Uh, sometimes these do kind of back off over time. You have the ability to screw it back down and on pretty easily from just underneath and that is nice and tight. That is what we wanted that to do, which is fantastic. And again, let me show you what that looks like with that screwdriver in there. That one's way too big. I knew that was gonna be. Let's see if my Phillips will go through and it did. And you can just kind of turn it just like that. But uh, it is all plastic, so I don't wanna strip it and break it. But uh, that is how you can tighten it down even just a little bit more, um, especially if that starts to uh, start coming undone. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and take this piece and put on, it is the hose guide piece. And so it just goes on hand tight right there. And you can go ahead and open up this nice big long piece and you're gonna feed that one that is white through the end of the hose straight back to this side right here. 
So that will get fed straight down and in, perfect. And you can go ahead and remove this plastic cap that is just there for when the packaging. And you will actually feed this into here and you should hear it snap. That means it is good. Uh, it does have that quick release there for future if you do need to take that off or adjust it. The other nice thing is these things will work perfect uh, for our hose lines. So we actually don't even need to buy new ones, but that's pretty awesome that it does come with that. And they also label it too. So this is really important later. One will be hot side, one will be cold side. The one that has the label is the hot side. So one other thing, you do need to use this weight here, and it does add a lot of weight. Um, sometimes you have to close this. You can't get it by hand, but this one I could. It does have a little piece in the middle you have to take off. It looks like a barbell. Uh, you'll need to take that off first, and then go ahead and snap that in. And we're all set. That is all we have to do. We do want to be careful when we're putting this back in. We will finish up the top half, but underneath the sink, that's all we have to do. So you're going to want some silicone caulk and we're just going to put a bead around the whole thing uh, just to make sure water does not get up and under it. So go ahead and do that to all sides. You do not have to have a ton, but this stuff can get pretty messy. So go ahead and make sure you do it all the way around. And that right there is good. And then we'll go ahead and put it up into the sink. So you gotta lift all that stuff up and into place. I then go ahead and push it down making sure all of it looks good, which I think that does. And if there's any bit of silicone kind of coming off around the edges, make sure to go ahead and get that up right away. But that has a really nice solid finish all the way around that. So I should have uh, put this on first. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off that weight and uh, bring it back up and through. Shouldn't be really difficult. But uh, I'll show you kind of a quick process on that. So go ahead and take that off. And remember this has that quick release on it, which is super convenient. Go ahead and pull that up and out. Uh, then we'll go ahead and feed it through. I'll uh, then feed that down and in. And that should come right back out there. Uh, then you can go ahead and put this back into that quick connect, just like so. Find the yellow spot on there and go ahead and put that back on. And just like that, that's fixed. We are gonna go ahead and put the hot and cold line back on. So uh, I am probably just gonna go ahead and move this a little bit to be able to give you a little bit better line of sight on both of these. We do want to go ahead and put some new Teflon tape. And so a lot of times that means you got to kind of get some of the old Teflon tape off if there's any on it. You want a good clean surface that that can mate with. So that looks good. And I'm using this uh, Oatly fast tape. I really like this stuff. It is the gray kind. It's a little bit more expensive, but I do think it is worth it. And so you're going to want to go ahead and put it around once or twice. These are not very big threads. Let me try to keep it nice and flat. I then go ahead and kind of tear it off. Or if you have a pair of scissors nearby, do the same thing for the other side, which is going to kind of be hard for you to see, but hopefully you can kind of remember what the last one looked like and did. And 
hand. So that looks good right there. Since we're on this side and the hot is right here, remember it does say hot. We're gonna go ahead and just start that one. I like to start them by hand, making sure we're not stripping anything. That's the last thing you wanna do is have more work and have to go get more parts. And then we'll go ahead and take that five eighths and go ahead and tighten it down. And you're just going for a good snug here. You're not coming to kill it. It's just a real nice snug fit. I am thankful this had new supply lines already built into it. Because normally you do need to replace those and I did forget to pick some up. So I am thankful for that. We'll go ahead and scoot all this fun stuff over a little bit. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun with that here in a minute. That's our next part of this project. And you definitely can get a new trap and everything else if you want to spend the money on it. Okay, don't be tempted to turn the water on yet. We still have things to hook up. So the next thing we're gonna do is go over here and get to our, it's not. So remember, we do want this disposal to be pretty much lined up like it was before. Okay. That right there is pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna see if I can move it back just a little bit. I think that looks really good. So this little spline thing has to catch and hold it. Uh, then we'll start moving our tubing around and hopefully we don't have to do too much correction. This definitely is a little different height of a sink. So I am gonna go ahead and just push this back and connect this in. This is from that dishwasher. So go ahead and get it up there. And then we'll go ahead and get a flathead screwdriver and we'll go ahead and tighten that down. You, with this, you do wanna make sure you're actually tightening it down onto the uh, garbage disposal part. It is very easy to put this too far and you tighten it down onto nothing except the hose and your hose clamp at that point is pretty pointless. And so this has lots of wiggle room, so we will probably be wiggling it around and figuring out what we need to do there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this part of the trap off. So we're going to go ahead and take this piece off too. This is just kind of a game of figuring out how you can get this thing back on here and uh, get everything to fit properly. Also look to make sure you don't have any rings in there because that uh, is where I'm just flipping this backwards from what it was and seeing if that will work. Because our previous sink was a bit deeper than this one on one side, which was this side. And so, Everything's still kind of loose, but uh, hopefully that makes sense what I'm doing here. And you never know, sometimes you just get lucky, which it looks like we may have here. If this actually does all the way work. Again, it's a lot of finagling it and moving it and trying to figure out what is the best. It may be hard to tell, but you do actually have a little groove that this thing sits in, make sure that it's sitting on there properly. So you wanna make sure this lines up and then we'll put this O-ring seal on there and then go ahead and start putting the metal piece up. These are those two flathead screws. We'll just get one started and then go to the other side and get it started. This is where we're pretty blind on this. So you do have to be careful making sure you get it in there and not dropping it in your bucket, which is easy to do. So 
So everything's by hand right there. Then you come in with your flathead. However, you can get back there and try to find it. So much of this is hard to see, and that's why plumbing is difficult. So, again, we just kind of try to find out what works and what doesn't work, and just kind of go from there. I ended up just taking everything off uh, just to make it easier and just kind of reworking it from there and just trying to see what fits together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece back on here. This is pretty much where it was before uh, tightening that down and trying to get the disposal to go in properly. Um, I might have to move the disposal just a little bit. Now I want to remember not to move the top piece. So it will be a little bit of finagling, um, but let's go ahead and put this on here. You'll put that little clear piece underneath it. And this is pretty dirty. I could have cleaned all this up or bought new, but it'll work fine. It's plastic. It'll last a lifetime, literally. And uh, just go ahead and tighten that down on there and be able to get it to that T the best that we can. And sometimes it's like wants to like not really go in well. And so sometimes you got to tighten it down and then loosen it back up a little bit here. Here's where I'm turning it just a little bit to uh, kind of help give me a little bit better angle. And uh, I think that's going to do it right there. I hope I don't have to move that much more because I don't want to ruin any of what I've done. And then we'll just kind of lightly tighten that down. We'll put this back together. I did take this back apart because I wasn't certain if I was going to have to use anything else. And so it's just what I did before when it was uh, on the ground instead of in the countertop. Make sure you put that, uh, that little seal back in there as well and spin it and hand tighten down. Remember, all this is really cheap plastic. Do not overkill it. You can really ruin some stuff. And then we'll put this one back on. And this is kind of like an accordion, uh, which is kind of nice. It allows us to uh, kind of give a better angle and uh, means we don't have to be as accurate as well, which is kind of nice. This was already on the sink before, and then we'll just kind of bend it up and tighten that down. Yours may be totally different. You may have to buy a whole bunch of this new plastic, get a new trap, everything like that, depending on exactly how yours is set up. Once you have everything kind of lined up where it should be now, you can go ahead and tighten everything back down, making sure it's all how it should be because we did untighten a lot of these different pieces. Um, you do just want to make sure they are all nice and hand tight. So we don't have any potential leaks. You do not need to put a pair of pliers on that. We can go ahead and plug back in your garbage disposal. And we'll go ahead and turn back on the water. on both sides. You may hear just a little bit of water and that is A-OK -okay normal. And then we're gonna go back up to the top side. So you can go ahead and come in here right now and pull this off. You could have done that earlier as well. Um, and if you really want to, you can save the rest of this for another project for another day. Um, or you can just get rid of it, it's up to you. My hands are filthy, so I'm just gonna pitch this. There's still plenty in there. So we are gonna need to get the top piece back out. So you may have to kind of pull up on that or pull up on that metal piece. Um, and it does tell you to go ahead and bleed uh, the lines. And so. And go ahead and let that run for about 15 seconds. And this is also a good test to go ahead and look under to make sure you're not leaking anywhere, which we look good there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back down on that because we need that again. Go ahead and open up your package. And 
and go ahead and turn off, spin out the little green piece on the top here. So the next thing is to go ahead, take off the green cap for this. I am going to put just a touch of plumber's tape on this. It doesn't say you have to, but uh, I think it is always helpful to do that. And so you're just going to go around it just like so and go ahead and pull that off. And then we'll go ahead and start spinning it on by hand. And you will need a pair of pliers, it says. You don't want to over tighten this, but you do want to make sure you get it tight. So I'm going to set that there for like two seconds. I'm going to use about a quarter turn. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, then we'll go ahead and test it again. Give you a couple of options on spray. It goes way down there, which is pretty awesome. You can get the whole thing nice and clean. And uh, then the other nice thing is it does retract itself right back in. There's a quite a few of them that do not do that. So I do like that that has that ability. Um, we still have one more thing to do. We need to go back up and under and tighten down all of the little things that uh, hold it to the countertop. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here is the next part and this is kind of hard to see, but you're going to see, you're going to need to get a Phillips screwdriver up in this cavity. There's three on the front. I believe there's four on the back and two on each side. And so I'm just going to show you one. You do want to make sure it latches onto the front and this thing will just screw in and tighten itself down to the front of that cabinet. The front of the countertop there. So it is kind of hard to see and sometimes you do have to kind of push back this way as you're doing it. Uh, but it should catch eventually and hold on nice and tight which is pretty awesome. Again, the last counter or the last sink did not have these onto the countertop so there are three in the front a few on the side and some in the back so go ahead and do this to all every single one of them so there's one last part to do is go ahead and get the soap dispenser we're going to go ahead and take this piece off on the bottom you'll have somebody go up and spin this one on this little o-ring needs to stay right there and this thing should just pop right out just like so. And so we'll go ahead and stick this in. Actually, you can go ahead and take this and put the straw piece in as well at this point, because you'll want that in a second anyways. Also, if you want somebody to fill this up before they go down, you can fill this up with whatever kind of soap you would like to use in there. And then you'll just have somebody screw this on underneath this direction, and then have it filled up and put in. So they're going to go ahead and take the nut and then you're going to want to make sure this is nice and centered up where you want it to go. And we ended up putting Dawn dish soap in ours just because that's what we wanted to do. You can choose to put whatever kind of soap you want in. And that is pretty long so it will take a while to screw that piece in. But you do want to make sure it's centered on the countertop just like what I'm doing here. Because there is a little bit of wiggle room. Go ahead and tighten it one more time. That's good. That still allows you to wiggle this piece, but that part is on. And then very carefully hand this to them. And then they'll go ahead and screw that in. It should only be a couple of revolutions. And since this pump is kind of new, it probably will, that's good right there. It probably will take a couple of pumps before you get anything out of it or a whole bunch, there we go. And that got it for you right there. So now that we have everything done on top, I would encourage you to come back down and make sure everything is good. You can tell I have a little bit of a leak right here, which I believe this little piece did not do what it was supposed to, or I might have accidentally put it on backwards. And so that can definitely happen. So this is why we check this a couple of times. And I think this just slipped off the end. So I'm just gonna push this back on, make sure it's properly around everything. And then go ahead and fit that back on. It definitely can happen. And so don't get discouraged 
you just keep going at it you keep making sure everything is nice and tight and this has some water on the top of it but i think it's where i opened that last one up so i'm just going to try to dry it up a little bit and then stick that back down under there because most of the time if it leaks it's going to go back down into there we'll go ahead and turn back on the water and so this is coming into this one right here I did not have the disposal on yet, but I will test that as well and go ahead and put it in on this side. And now that should be more than good. Again, you don't have to put it crazy tight, but if it was leaking, you would see it right now pouring out because we have that on full blast on that side and it's going straight down into it. So that looks really good to me. Again, I'd come back in a day or so and check everything just to make sure. The other thing you can do is come down here and just finish cleaning up underneath here. So I had a lot of towels and stuff. And just make sure all this looks nice and clean. And sometimes I don't even put all the stuff back under it till I give it some time to make sure there are no leaks at all. So that's up to you if you wanna put your stuff back under because most people's lower level of their underneath their sink is filled with different items. So you choose to do what you want there. So we're gonna go ahead and put back on the breaker. So come back out here and go ahead and flip back on your breaker. And now we'll go ahead and test the garbage disposal. So we wanna go ahead and run some water down on it. And garbage disposal works again, just how it should. Okay, here is the final product. This thing turned out so well. This does have some of the different features it has in it with the cutting board and the rack. Uh, I think it turned out really well. We also have the soap dispensal and the faucet. And so uh, if this was helpful, please like, subscribe, comment if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching.